On the phone is Bloomberg's energy and environmental policy reporter, Jennifer DeLui in Washington. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us on this. Um, let's just get this out of the way right now. Uh, you know, here we are in the midst of this, one of the worst crises when it comes to energy in U.S. history. Uh, how did it happen? In a, in a word, everything failed or performed uh, lower uh, than expected. So I guess that's a few words. But, but the reality is this was a, a complex problem, and it has a lot to do with an ill-prepared power grid and, and really shortfalls in traditional electricity sources. So we've heard a lot of finger pointing, or, or we've seen a lot of finger pointing toward wind in Texas, uh, and, and that's been prompted because some wind turbines did freeze up during the cold snap and, and go offline. Um, but uh, ERCOT, the, the power regulator in the state, uh, does not, or the grid operator, does not count on a lot of wind in this season, in winter. And other power sources across the board were, were bedeviled uh, as well. We saw frozen instruments that triggered shutdowns at gas and coal plants. Uh, natural gas flows, of course, were pinched as, as well as froze shut. And then supplies were diverted to home heating. Uh, we even saw a, a nuclear plant in South Texas go offline because of icy water. Uh, so, so across the board, uh, energy power plants uh, failed uh, to, to deliver the power that was expected of them. Well, it, all, it raises the question and brings us to the next point, which is really what your recent piece in Bloomberg News focuses on, which is what comes next. And, and Biden's plea to, to remake the grid gets a boost on the crisis that's happening right now. Um, what has the president said about this and how does that line up with uh, what he has wanted to do to remake America's electricity grid? Right. So, so President Biden on the campaign trail talked a lot about wanting to make a historic investment in the nation's electric grid. Uh, that, and, and without providing a lot of details, he talked about doing things like better transmission systems, more high voltage power lines to connect rural areas uh, that have renewable power with uh, big cities uh, uh, on the coast. Uh, more battery storage that would allow the system to draw power, uh, to, to pull power when it is needed, whether because demand spikes, as we've seen in Texas, or uh, because renewables are intermittent and, and their generation has gone down. So that's the kind of thing he talked about on the campaign trail. We are looking forward to seeing de more details in coming weeks as he rolls out an infrastructure plan. Uh, but, you know, these kinds of changes are things that, ha uh, you know, energy experts and, and uh, electricity analysts have been saying are necessary for years. Uh, it's not simply a matter of throwing money at the problem. There are regulatory barriers and challenges to get around, including just uh, simply state-to-state -state coordination. Uh, so it's a, it's a big challenge, um, but it's one that uh, many folks uh, beyond the president have been talking about. But is there bipartisan support for this? Because even in the midst of this, we're, we're already seeing sort of the finger-pointing start, the partisan finger-pointing start, right? We, we, we have the governor of Texas on Fox News yesterday saying that, that this is why we, we cannot have a, a Green New Deal, for example. Um, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of agreement on what the solution is. Uh, you're right. And in fact, there is, uh, you know, kind of a, a reverting to the trenches on, on the, the broader issues here around energy and renewable energy. We're certainly seeing a, a lot of uh, the classic party lines on, on that topic. Infrastructure is a little bit different. Again, the infrastructure, uh, the approach on, on Capitol Hill is likely to be uh, to break along party lines. Uh, but there is a, a broader bipartisan recognition of the need to invest in, in the nation's electric grid. Uh, and, and it would come – the, the interesting thing is that some of the upgrades that we're talking about, uh, you know, again, high-voltage power lines to, to carry renewable power from the Midwest to cities on the coast, that's something that would uniquely benefit a lot of red states, Republican-leaning states in the Midwest that happen to be rich in wind, or in the uh, West, uh, such as Arizona, that happen to be rich in solar power. Uh, right now, there's there's plenty of power uh, generation opportunities in parts of the country that simply don't have the means to get it to the cities that need it. And that's one of the things that analysts and the Biden administration has talked about. Bloomberg's Jennifer DeLui. Jennifer, thanks so much for, for taking the time this morning. Really appreciate it. Yeah. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.